Hi, I'm Clint Baker, Training Center Manager at the Reno Automotive Training Center with Sherwin-Williams. And what we're going to learn about today is how to take apart a formula to better understand how neutral colorants and chromatic colorants affect the formula. We're going to see how we can affect the lightness, the saturation, and the hue of a color formula. What we have here is a Munsell color tree. And what this does is represents the three dimensions of color space. Through the middle of this color wheel, we have a neutral color axis. The neutral color axis is represented by white and black, and it's got gray that runs all the way in between. As we take a look at this color, we can see that this grayness is represented by the neutral axis. And as we travel further away from that neutral axis, we get a much more rich, saturated color. That would be our second color description, saturation. So lightness is through our grayness, our white and black, or our neutral axis. Saturation is increasing it by moving away from that with more, uh, in this case, green color toner. Okay. The third dimension would be hue. Hue describes color as either being blue, red, yellow, or green. Blue, red, yellow, and green are the four primary colors that we're going to talk about. Okay. So once again, lightness, saturation, and hue. What we have here is a graph representing the neutral lightness axis of the color wheel. At the top of it we have white, at the bottom of it we have black. If we add white and black together, we'll get gray. This is the neutral gray that represents the color that we mixed up earlier. I'm just going to put some of our gray paint right here in the middle. And we learn that if we add white to this gray, it will lighten our color. We want to lighten it a little bit more, we add a little more white, and a little bit more, and a little bit more, and we can dramatically affect the grayness of this color, okay? If we're going to darken this, what we would do is add black. Just a little bit of black will darken it. A little bit more makes it darker yet, a little darker, and a little bit darker. So what we have is gray that can either be lightened or it can be darkened with either the white or the black. And that represents our neutral color axis. In this cup we have all the toners in this formula that represented chromatic toners. There happen to be blue and red in this one. What I'm going to do is give us a representation of these chromatic toners out here. Okay. Before we start though, I'm going to take this gray, the neutral color, and I'm going to add it to our chromatic color, and we're going to see what color we actually have. What we should have is a pretty close representation of the blue color that we originally chose. We just broke it down into its neutral and chromatic toners. Okay? And we compare this to our prospector chip that we looked at earlier, we've got a representation of what it is. So what we're going to do is put this blue right in the middle here. And we're going to learn how we can affect that color. Alright? So if we were going to take this blue and desaturate it, in other words, make it more gray, we would take the neutral colorants from the formula and we would add them to it. And what we'll notice is that it becomes more and more desaturated. The more gray we add, the more it goes away from looking blue. It gets to a point when it's desaturated to the point where it doesn't even look blue anymore. Okay? So to desaturate the color, we add the neutral toners and we move it away from looking nice, bright, rich, and blue. 
Now, on the other hand, if we were going to increase saturation, we would add the chromatic toners. What this is going to do is make this color more rich, clean, and definitely more saturated. We're traveling further away from that neutral color axis that was affecting us by the grayness earlier. So, what we have is a desaturated color and a more saturated color. So now what we're going to do is increase saturation, but we're also going to take in effect the hue. This particular color is blue. It can only be off to the red or the green side. Okay? In this particular formula, there is a red that happens to be magenta, and it also has a green shade blue. If we want to increase saturation and affect hue at the same time, it would look something like this. As we add this red toner to the formula, you'll notice the color start to travel in that direction. And it doesn't take long to where all of a sudden you notice this color gets so far away from blue that it actually almost looks violet. Okay? So if we want to increase saturation but go toward the green side, we could use this toner. This particular green shade blue will make it definitely more saturated. You can see how this blue is getting more rich, clean, and saturated as we travel. Okay? So, we can increase saturation by having a mixture of both of these ingredients equally, which will bring us straight away from that neutral axis, or we can increase saturation going to the red side or toward the green side. The other thing we can do to this particular color is lighten it and darken it and decrease saturation at the same time. Here's how that would work. If we add white to this blue, we will affect the grayness at the same time. It does become more desaturated, but you'll notice it's also lightening it at the same time. All we're using is white and it's actually making this color look a lot more chalky. Okay? So what we've now done is we've desaturated this color and we've lightened it. Okay? If we want to desaturate and darken it, we would add black. It doesn't take very much black at all to affect this color. So now what you're seeing is it's getting very dirty looking. It's making it darker and darker and darker. In just that little bit of time, we've moved it from blue all the way to looking black with just very little black. So the lesson learned is this. We can take this blue color and make it desaturated or increase saturation. We can make it lighter and desaturated. We can make it darker and desaturated. Or we can increase saturation and move it toward the red side or we can increase saturation and move it toward that green shade blue side. So to recap what we've learned today, we learned about neutral and chromatic toners, and we learned about the three main characteristics of color adjustment, lightness, saturation, and hue, and how we can use this information to help us better adjust a color formula.